Okay, so now we're looking at more of the detail that the Calvinists and Catholics and other replacement people don't look at. Left hand side of the screen, they know we're grafted in. They use this verse too a lot to justify replacement theology. But they're not looking at the left hand side of the screen. If you're replacing somebody else, they were supposed to be first, and now you are instead. What's the last thing that happens? The last thing that happens is abolishing an enmity. If you replace somebody else, they're going to be your enemy, honey. Okay? But Christ abolished the enmity. So the idea that, the, that they have a replacement theology, that all oh, the Jews are bad now, and we replace them, well, what they're doing is they're continuing the enmity by their position. But that's not what Christ did. Look at the right-hand side of the screen. He abolished it, which was what? The law of the commandments. See? Now, I hope you remember, you just finished seeing Romans 10.4. He ended the law. Now it's going farther than that and saying he abolished the enmity of the commandments to make a new man. See, because he parlayed the law in order to win at the cross, in order to defeat another group of persons, Satan and company, from which battlefield victory we derive our covenant not from Israel, theme of the book of Hebrews. But in Israel at the left, there are a couple of hanging chads. One of which is, well, they want the law to still be applicable, just like the replacement theologians do. The replacement theologians want to say, well, see, we replaced them. The law is replaced by us. And Israel's busy saying, no, the law is still applicable. Because they, they think that, that, you know, they listen to the Christians and they say, well, you guys are claiming to replace us. No, we're right and you're wrong. So, we see, both sides are wrong. Because there's a new covenant on the right-hand side of the screen. He abolished it. Romans 10.4, he fulfilled it. Well, you know, when you fulfill a contract, then the contract's ended. It's over. Finish. Okay, but you're not without a law. You got a new law, the law of Christ. That's also in Paul. Law of Christ, law of grace. James calls it the royal law in James 2.8. When you complete covenant A, and there are still ongoing services, like making a body for Christ, then you have a new covenant. Get that? Which is exactly what God promised the Jews back in, in Jeremiah 31. Well, any Jew who believes in Christ is just as much part of church as the Gentile who became a Jew in the Old Testament would have been part of Israel. God didn't just leave everybody in the lurch. That's the left-hand side of the screen. God didn't leave them in the lurch. We're grafted in, but they're not left out. See? Look, 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 look. By their transgression, their rejection, salvation has come to the Gentiles. Oh, my mouse is not working. I can't get this to work. There. By their transgression, refusal of Christ when he came, salvation has come to the Gentiles to make them, meaning the, the Jews, jealous. When you're making somebody jealous, it means, hi, I got something that you think you don't have. Okay, so come on over to this side here, and you can get it too. So they're not left out, okay? We're not replacing Israel. The ones who are left out are the demons because they don't want. That's Psalm 110. Between Jews and Gentiles, right hand side, abolish the enmity. Fulfilled the law, completed the law, Romans 10, 4. Make the two into one new man. Okay, so you got that? We got two walls going on here. Two covenants, two walls. Actually, total of four to make a building. You had one wall, which was before the Jews, for the Gentiles. That was Adam to Abram. That's one wall. Then you had the Jews, 
which is the second wall. We all know about that. Then the third wall is church. And the fourth wall are the trib and millennial people. That makes a building four groups of people. All built on the foundation of Christ. And then, and then, there's this outer group who, before mankind began, elected to be an outer group, who are the demons, and they're the ones that church replaces. But you got four walls to a building. Four different covenants. That's why Revelation is a four-act play. So we do not replace the Jews. We replace the demons. The brideship of Christ was an offer to Israel. She refused. Matthew 24, Vashti refused to come. I mean, he's changing up the facts a little bit. But it's the same idea as the book of Esther. And so now, highways and byways, everybody who believes in me will be part of bride. Come to the wedding supper. Only you're coming as a bride. You just don't know that until you get there. <laughs> All right. So, I don't know. I hope this helps explain the essence of it. I could go through a lot more verses. But the reason why the preterists are preterists is because they, want, they look at the left-hand side of the screen and I oh, see these dirty Jews okay it's only going right to left isn't that hysterical I can only get the the thing to go right to left okay they're looking at verses like that and saying, see the dirty Jews we replaced them they're forgetting all about this which is a higher deal a better deal than the Mosaic law that's the book of Hebrews I suggest you read it to see for yourself and then that's why the book of Hebrews concludes at Hebrews 11, 39, and 40. Apart from us, they will not be resurrected. Why? Because we have our own covenant. And it's based on Israel. It's based right there, right-hand side, blue, based on Christ for good, His God's good deeds in us.